just before we start, guys, <clears throat> the whole point of this, number one is it's one of our new members in the academy. But um, this is a, a guy, Ryan, who took the time to join us on a 10-day academy that I ran down in Plet. And uh, the difference in what he's done is amazing. He's really, we watched a video every day, some of his games, some of other people's games, but we did a video crit on a daily basis. And it really, really shows you up. One of the major things that I wanted to just um, say to you though, especially if you're a beginner polar player and you're just starting out and um, sort of working your way up the ranks, this is not a game of perfect. This is a game of hustle, okay? And it's also, if you've not grown up in a polar family, to be smart on a polar field, um, sometimes it, it's quite hard to get um, the, the real game smarts, you know? And what I want to really impress on you is, number one, if you get the man marking right, it halves that time of, of that progress through. But also remember that you've got to get out and do. Don't be standing looking around wondering what to do. If you're standing, standing around wondering what to do, go find a man and beat him. But if you're late on a ride-off and you're going to get beaten or you're going to crash into somebody's backside and not make a legal ride-off, just remember you will never be able to make a positive play on every play you go to. In your mind, just make what played. You've done great. You've beaten me there. But you give up that play so that you only give up one play. Now you get positive on the next play and you beat the man there and now you're positive again. Where if you're always trying to go to the plays that have happened, and that's what happens when you start the ball chase, is you're always late on the ball, then it's this never-ending downward spiral of late to a play, late to a play, late to a play, because you've made the ball the center of your kind of world. And when you get to where the ball was, it's already moved. So you'll always be late. And that's what I wanted to just show you how quickly that can change. So I'm going to show you literally 30, 40 seconds of Ryan playing in a four-goal game. And also I'm aware that in a four-goal game, he won't be playing um, the same quality of horse that he's playing in a 10-goal game. He's keeping his better horses for that game. But if you watch what he's thinking about, and always it's the ball. And because of that, he's always slow. And suddenly in the 10 goal, having had a whole lot of days of watching videos and, and watching his games, you see how much he's improved and how really effective he is on the field. That's what I want to bring to light today. So let's just play a little bit of that first video. Okay, guys, so just, <clears> just so you understand that, we're going to watch the first clip of, of Ryan before he went through the clinic. And then we're going to actually review one of the games that he played in um, once he was actually starting to get everything right. So Gabble, obviously... We'll, we'll focus in on him, but Gav's going to be chatting through a lot of about um, what everyone else is doing on the field and, and where people are going wrong, where they're going right, etc. So uh, Also, um, it's very easy to find him on the field because he's got a bright red helmet, okay? So he stands out well. He's not in the picture right now. He's right of screen. Come on, 
just to watch through one chucker of the next game and see how he's turned everything around. <clears throat> and he's really got man focused. And because of that, he's really, really um, competitive on the field. Again, number two in black, red helmet. Okay, so easy to pick out. Take the mouse, Gavin. You can just handle the the speed and then also point out, remember that the mouse shows up on the, on the screen for everybody. So if you look here, he hasn't gone and made a negative ride off, okay? He has waited and timed that ride off well, so he gets past the man and then beats him. And even though he doesn't get the backhand, he's got past the man and has had a shot at the ball. Again here, he stayed with the man, okay? And the ball is out, but he stayed with the man. If you look here, he actually comes in here, makes a hook on one man. He's beaten a second man. So he's actually taken two players out here. Really good hustle, okay? Ball ahead. Now he's given up the negative already. He knows he's beaten to the next shot. So he's not going to push the ride off from here, which he was doing, and getting into a ride off where he's already beaten. You okay, see how sorry, can I just pause you there for a moment? I just want to drop the volume down a little bit here, um, just so that everyone can hear you a little bit more clearer. Um, and then, guys, sorry, I'm just leaning over Gav's shoulder here. I just wanted to uh, make it full screen for everyone. There we go. Um, let's carry on. Sorry about that. My mistake. Okay, so if you look there also, um, what he's done there is he's really paid attention to the little lesson on when can you hook, okay? And when should you play an away backhand and when should you play a tail backhand? Now, if you look, watch, he's blocked that player. When the ball comes up and he knows he's beaten, he gets out of that. But what can he now do that is positive? If this player in front tries to play a tail backhand or plays a pre-swing on his backhand, you've got a good chance of hooking him. And you can see him get there and try and hook that upswing of that backhand. Again, a lot of pressure. He's got a man behind him free. So really good hustle there, okay? And you see the black team collecting the ball again and again. If you watch the player in front in, in white here, the, the player in black, he never ever marks him. And you see the difference, okay? He's always free of him. He's run past him. Now he's running parallel lines. He's not making a ride off here. He's going to where the ball's going. And because of that, he's still wide of the ball. Black can just turn around. White is now on the outside of the play. He hasn't checked up, got back on the inside of play. So again, doing all the things that Ryan was doing before. But if you look at play coming through here, you see how he's gone in. Watch Ryan now. There goes that pass out. Sorry, that was the go just missed that goal there. <clears throat> now you see him run straight across. You saw him running across to mark a man there. He's got on the inside of the man. There he's got his man. He's got him beaten on the outside. The video of own the rugby ball on the inside of play. He's done that. He's with his man. He hasn't shifted his focus to come back to this player with the ball here. That's not his job. The player that's got to be marking him must go there. He's done what he's meant to be doing. And if you see them come back in now, he's turned and come back. And again, if you're looking here, he's on the inside of the field. He's beaten this fight that he's marking, who now can't attack. So you see the difference in his focus. Before it was always the ball. Now he's really hustling and beating a man. And because of that, he will have much better plays. If you look at the white here, staying in that ride off when he's already beaten, instead of getting back on the inside, getting this man's mallet, making it difficult for him to um, distribute the ball, he stayed in negative, okay? This ball's already been turned and he is still trying to check his horse. So again, just not paying attention and look, the black has come back, the black four, and left him trailing in his wake. If you look in front here, Ryan saw the man with the ball, 
you see he's already beaten the white who had was behind him and could easily have beaten Ryan if he was focused. But Ryan's done the right thing. That video of Mark in attack. Okay. Clear the goals. Let the man put the ball in the goal mouth and then win it. Okay. He's done that. That ball didn't come first time, which it could have. And unfortunately, a misdirected shot here. But Ryan in the right place all the time there. If you watch him here, he's come across, put pressure on the hitter. He immediately goes back and beats the next man. And if you look at real man focus here and here, owning the inside, the rugby ball, as I'm talking about. Okay. So before you carry on the gap, I just, guys, if you don't mind, um, I just want to double check that all the sound and everything is working fine. So if, um, if you could just drop us a comment and say sound is still great, I'd appreciate that. Obviously, we don't want um, – this to be going on and you guys are just watching a game of polo and you can't actually hear what Gav is saying it would defeat the whole point of it so if you can just drop a comment and say sound is good um that'd be great so carry on Gav. No, Sorry great for interrupting. Comment. lovely to have you here to get all of these things right so you're looking at the black team really paying attention to the basics here and again you see white in front here not checking with the man He's playing faster than he has to. He doesn't check with the man and keep him on his outside. So again, Ryan beating his man here. So he will come in and have the next play on this. There's the backhand coming. Great little backhand. And that backhand to nobody. Okay, Blacks have picked up the ball. But the point is, they put in pressure because they're paying attention to the basics here. Is that a foul there, yeah? Well, a, if you look a, here, a sandwich. number one, this player is going into, yes, a, a sandwich number one. But secondly, they're two of them to one. Instead of this player focusing on the man behind and beating him. So so what, what should happen, and this actually happened in the review that we did the other day, um, because the the player, sorry, let me just go back and touch here. Back hand to no one. So, so this red player now should rather check up and go for the player behind. He should be focusing a, here. Yeah, and allow the player this ahead man to make this play to to wait for that man. Yeah, and remember last week, Rob, we talked about this player running too far into goals to allow this man back on his inside. Yeah. If he waited slightly wider and entices this man to go this side, yeah. he will then make the ride off and have the ball on his offside. Okay. Okay. Where if he stays in front here and gets too far on the inside. Too far on the left. On the left. Yeah. This player then can put the ball on the other side of him, and that's what makes this player go to this guy's mallet. Okay. That this guy's made the mistake in front here of getting in on the inside here, where he's easy for this man to put the ball where he can't play it. That entices this man into the hook. They then sandwich him, leave the ball behind, and you've got and a, free a free player player. behind. Yeah. So just a chapter of errors there of no organization. You see, there's back inside. And the player in the red helmet here desperately trying to make a hook because this man is out of play. He's put himself in such a bad position. Yeah. Where if he just waited a little wider, he's at least got a chance of getting to the mallet and making the ride off here. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so a sandwich there. All left behind. An easy goal. Yeah. Okay, just a chapter of errors there. Again, if you watch this player taking the knock in here, he's not getting the ball traveling at the same speed as himself. The ball is still bouncing around. He hasn't put the ball, let it settle, and then moved his horse. He's trying to move the ball while he's already cantering. Mm. It's very difficult. Put the ball where you want it. Canter up and make the distribution, especially on a tough horse like this. So now that ball bounces sideways. He doesn't get a clean shot. Super. Again, just that backhand. Guys, when you play these backhands, you've got to hit angles, okay? That backhand into a horse is exactly the same as if you haven't hit it. Ooh. A whole chapter of fouls and things going on there that were never blown.
and if you look again at lovely anticipation okay let's just watch through this let's watch this man here he's living in the past yeah. he thinks there was a foul yeah the, the whistle hasn't gone you're not going to change the umpire's mind yeah get on and hustle and get to the next play mm. okay so because he's doing that he's lost the next play now he's still sitting doing nothing here comes a backhand and you see here ryan was marking at the front and he's now back into the attack mm. so again for you guys wondering how you're going to play one and back and then one because you're marking a specific man here's an ideal situation where you see ryan was marking in, a, in in defense there marking the man he should be marking he sees his team's got the ball he leaves that man and he runs for the pass because just remember the man line ball doesn't mean you've got to just focus on the man yeah it means when your team's got the ball he's got to try and find you get into space and go for the pass so all of that has happened really well there <clears throat> unfortunately rough ground don't mind yeah. you've done everything right until there now if you look here again this awful tap tap polo okay when nobody will hit a backhand here comes the backhand look how effective this man's gone what he didn't do which would have been better is to look around and see how much time he had yeah. because he's running onto a pass here that is still a bouncy ball and if he looks around this player is way away from him he can slow down and play as fast as he has to not as fast as he can so that's still the same mistake that creeps into his polo all the time he gets into the spaces and plays too quickly okay without looking around so when that plays left now if you look now you've got a perfect situation where if this player should played a short tail here this man's on the line he's collected it and it's really quick and he owns the play instead of which they both drift along to the ball one turns away the next one taps it around misses the next shot because it's a bouncy ground and this player has got nowhere to go because the first time backhand didn't come mm. And you see, he missed the ball, if you look at that, okay? But look what Ryan's focus was at the end of that. He's made a right off here, got the guy off the ball, missed it. Look, boom, closes him out again. Yeah. So his whole focus is man, line, ball. Again, if you see White riding into that shot, for me would have been a foul. Both of them over committing, three of them over committing, all looking for the ball none of them paying attention to marking and here's a, a, the the lowest goal player in the team with a free run to goal yes he misses it but you're at the other end of the field now and you're under under pressure to try and clear this goal look at here look at the real focus here yes this man's got the ball and a silly man behind trying to find a foul that isn't a foul and but he's just, just stop man. that again Gav. yep he's there running behind looking for a foul the players miss the ball and because he's looking for a foul okay. he's ridden straight over 100%. the top of it that he could have quite easily picked up and 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 then had possession and turned it in it's just, it, you see that happening so often 100 percent yeah but what's really interesting for me is with this whole um man focus if you look um just a little bit back Ryan was looking, he'd beaten the man in attack, looking for a pass. Yeah. But the pass doesn't come, so he's still with the man, and he can then go back, and he's the next player with that shot. Here he comes with the ball. Yeah. Yes, he leaves it for his man, but he had the backhand. Yeah. So that he mark and attack puts you with the man. Yeah. So whichever way the ball goes, you still own the guy. Yeah, okay. 100%. So that's the end of that, Chucker. I don't know if we want yeah, to go on. Yeah, 100%. Let's, let's, we do? let's do it um so guys just just a reminder here um obviously a lot of what gav is talking about here like play as fast as you have to not as you can um man line ball um owning the inside of the field not going into negative those are all lessons that mark we have attack. mark and attack 
um, individual lessons mm -hmm. that he goes into a lot of depth and in, inside the academy, um, which is obviously, you know, we highly recommend that you go and, and get into the academy if you're not inside already. Um, so, like I said earlier, doors are open for the academy. Just go to gavsayspoloacademy.com um and you can get in through a 14-day free trial to um to actually have a look at all those lessons um before you know you start paying towards towards your membership so just go and have a look at those details at that web page um and we do game reviews like this um well we're starting to do them on a regular basis so um just so you guys know do it now because we will be closing on sunday um okay cool sorry Gav. can you no carry great drop and yeah. also just um from a point of view of if you're wanting to have a quick look at a little part of your game, we will happily have a look at that and, and do a crit on that as well as your swing and that kind of stuff in a one-on-one -on -one lesson. Yeah, 100%. And those details are all there, so. Yeah. Right, so we go to the second chucker. Again, look how long this fight has stayed in a negative ride-off. So he stays there trying to compete that. Instead of getting back on the inside, just check up, get on the guy's tail, make him hit a backhand, the ball's free. Like this, you stay in it, and the man is going to run all the way to goal. You are never going at the same speed as him, so you don't make the hook, check, and make a ride-off. You're trying to steal the ball again and live with the, the huge ball skills you might have that come to nothing okay because you're playing too quickly you're never ever focusing on a man here <clears throat> and right from the back through the goals why because you didn't get out of a negative ride off get on the man's tail make him release the ball look for the man instead of playing at a different speed to what he's playing trying to steal the ball going quicker stay in a negative ride off you have to chase it all comes down to Get out of the negative plays. Now again, I think that this was a good play because had he played that backhand, he might have been fouled. But he's close enough to make this man. He's dribbling at a canter, so he hits the ball badly. Ryan gets in here, takes it forward. But now, instead of trying to go to the ball, he goes straight back onto the man. And the man doesn't get the shot. The next guy should have been doing the same thing. But if you look, he's back into play really quickly there. And quicker than all the other guys because he's beating a man all the time. That there silly play from the, the low goaler trying to steal the ball away from the high goaler. Turn around, put pressure on him. Look in front here, man already beaten. Who's this guy going to hit the ball to? There's nobody coming close to him, running angles. You've got the high goaler, who's a higher handicap than this man, and there's nobody running back and looking for angles and short little plays. It's all this predictable stuff, this boom, and it's this Isn't long shot to one. where? Miss hit, and even the low goaler hits that ball. Okay, the backhand didn't quite reach him there, so he gets caught. Good goal. Bit of a lucky, yeah. of a lucky goal in, in that the back, yeah. You know, the backhand didn't, the backhand didn't yeah. reach him. If it had, he yeah. was away. And you see how he's run an angle one way. Now he's running back again. He's wrong footed this man. So he's getting into space, being available for a pass. That ball should have been hit then. The one, yeah. Okay, That's this is cool. horrible polo. You've got a man who's beaten his player, got free one tap longer and now the ball is on the other side of this man so to hit it here you've got to hit it through a horse that shot one tap before was and the whole black team was away there ball stolen away from him what are you doing <laughs> you can hear my voice in the background saying good lord much better play by white there Black. No, by white, by white. because oh, okay. he didn't get into the negative. Uh, he Black is messing around with the ball. 
he's got into that strong position behind, the man eventually stops dead, the ball's there, he steals. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to blow that and give you that foul. Unfortunately, the shot too long. Oh, my filming not the best there. Now, for the first time, he's gotten beaten in attack. So if that ball was in the goal mouth, that was a goal. Yeah. And that's back to the old habits of watching what's happening with the ball instead of beating this man. Okay. So it's just, it's quite interesting for you guys because you will find that as you start to get more and more into what I'm talking about, you can hold it together for a certain amount of time and then you revert to bad habits. Okay. Mm. And you'll find that if you just persevere, you will do it for a chucker, then for two chuckers, then for three chuckers, until it becomes your default setting. So um, just, again, gotten beaten there. And also just to say, you will get beaten in some plays. You know, it's impossible not to. <clears throat> okay, foul there, man getting in too close. It's come from an offside position as yeah. well. But if you see again, get out of negative. So nicely done here. Because that ball's going up. And here he would be beaten. Okay. He's behind. This man has done a good job of defense. So what do you do? Get right on his tail. There. Don't make the ride off. And now you're still free to go up and look for a pass. Beat the man again. Wow, some interesting fouls not, blow, not blown there. <laughs> again, if you see, again, just drifting back into bad habits here. Mm. Okay, turning where he should have checked and got on the inside of this man. I don't care if there's a backhand or not at that point. You know, it's a rough ground. You're going to have to make up yards here. In a good position now. I think this is the chucker. Yeah, that's good. We go? Yeah, that's good. Nice angle, right length. You see Ryan clearing the ball away for the man behind. Then the pass comes, and he'll be the man on the boards picking the ball up. Again, just good anticipation. Everything good except that on the boards there, he's got the play. Don't be trying to run. Just mm. check up, control the ball, and make sure that your pass goes infield towards the goals. Okay? Just that kind of... I've got the ball, I've got to go as fast as I can feeling. You've got to stop that feeling, you know. Look around and play as fast as you have to play. There you see he's got this play. Now shut down. He's accelerating here. If he just quietly shuts down, he's got the ball off the boards and he can then make a really good distribution pass. Instead of which, ball over the boards. You will see the difference here where the logo player on the other side goes to negative, okay? Where I've shown you how time and again these guys are not going to negative and they win. Right here, black one is beaten. 
get out of this ride off. You're not going to make a difference to this. White is able to carry the ball um, round the field clockwise, okay, um, and you're on his outside or he's able to just beat you, turn the ball. So if you stay in that negative, it's exactly what he wants. You, okay, not <laughs> didn't execute that very well, but the idea was there. And again, he's beaten the man behind, so he's free with the ball. Really, really nice play here. Yeah, he's waiting. Just again, if you're looking, the, the one thing that you have to learn to do is to trust yourself, okay? And not just to do what I'm telling you to do. In other words, I'm saying don't turn the ball every time. But if you look at this play, okay, Ryan's coming back and he's got that play free here. He's got nobody to hit the ball to. So it would be a far better play just to take both of these players are going back. If he hits the backhand, it's going straight to them. Just take it past them. Mm -hmm. Now you can either control or one of your teammates has got a chance to go to the ball. Yeah. Again, well, once you cap it past, now utilize your 360 vision and look around and decide what's the best opportunity or what's the best option from that position. Trust yeah. yourself. Yeah. If you want to turn the ball and there's nobody to hit it to, you've created space. Mm. You've also bought time for your team to get to where you can hit them the ball. But if you're going to just get there and without looking, just hit the ball, you see that backhand's going to nobody. All three whites at the back there. So again, if you watch this white here, he's got all the. Sorry, let's just I went back too oh, far. I run very far there. Yeah, there you go. There we've hit it here. So you've got white with the ball here. He's in space. Check up, set the ball up, and hit it into the goal mouth. What he does is he wants to pick up a ball on a right bouncy field and run and dribble the ball. And all this fancy footwork and stuff. And guess what? You lose the ball at the end of the day. That first shot could have gone into the goal mouth and you run and finish the job. running free all the time running to kamikaze backhands that you can never pick up there's always a man free and whites under pressure all the time because they never adhere to the man line ball okay that's a super knocking man running and the man that's marking the black marking this guy is sleeping so that's a super knock-in going across there. Just a little bit long, so Black is able to kind of get it and, and beat him there. Again, White here running, trying to steal the ball from a, a player that is unbelievably good with the ball. So you now left 50 meters from play and everybody coming back mm -hmm. this way. You're going to negative plays. Mm -hmm. This is the game smart that, that I'm talking about. Back, yeah. You know, that you've got to give away some of the plays that you can't make to be competitive in every play. Mm. Okay. Good goal. Yeah, great goal. But if you look at five and five and a half to one, and you realize something is going awry here. Look at all the blacks are free. Every single white is committed to attack. And what happens is that they're always trailing, going into the goal mouth and goal after goal after goal. Playing so quickly, never controlling, never beating the man. Just, just stop there for a moment. Um, guys, I don't know if you've noticed, but after every goal, 
um, the play has started with a hit in off the 60 yards. So just so you understand why that's happening is that pet has been trialing um, a new format. It's a shortened um, uh, chucker time. It's four minutes 30. Five I think. and a half. It's five, five and a half now. Yeah. It was four minutes 30. It's now five and a half minutes. Um, it's five, five and a half. So first ball is at five minutes. Second ball is at five and a half. And then sides don't swap ends after a goal is scored. And the, the, the game restarts with um, a knock-in from the 60-yard line um, in front of the goals that we that we scored at. So just to – so you, if anyone's noticed um, why, you know, and you were wondering why they there's always a penalty um, in inverted commas after a goal, it's that's just how the game restarts after a goal. So sorry, we'll carry on. No, there. 100%. You can see it's the same rules as if the ball goes over the sideline. The umpire drops the ball and you have to play it, I think, within 10 seconds or something. Yeah. Okay. But again here, you remember last week's interview that we did, I mean, for Tiamo and Wendy. Here you've got exactly what we were telling them. This player is free here, but he wants to try and beat the man running around him clockwise where if he just checked up, he could come back inside Ryan here, okay, and start to make passes on the inside here instead of trying to carry the ball alone. Okay, so you've got it down here, but it's over the back line. Right, fourth chucker. Again, all the fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Lats not being blocked. One tap too many, drop the ball, and now you're in trouble. Hit the ball when you've set it up. Now he's hooked, ridden off. Hooked on that uh, upswing of that backhand. He's done a good job blocking the next one. And again. Tap, 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 control, tap. Man beats you while you're tapping. Now it's a slow release. Where you're going to hit the ball to into the other player's horse, and again, no angles to speak of. So Ryan can get in here, block the shot, and it's all this extra time taken. Again, that tap straight onto a man's mallet, just tapping the ball too far. Lovely first time backhand. Mm. So, and look at this. Here are you now running into the goals. You've got a number one free. There goes a pass into the goal oh, now. That's and that's super polo, but it came from that first time pass. And again, your logo are running quicker to a ball than he needs to. He could have checked up, got it controlled, and put it through. So again, now, just, yes, it looks fancy and it looks wonderful. But gives everybody time to get there, hook your mallet. Now, total disarray in the team. You've got to run back and defend what should have been a good pass. Now he's got to hit it. Again, man being beaten. Doesn't quite get that backhand. Again, White trying to steal it. All about the ball. Here comes the ball upfield. Ryan and doing Ryan, really great. well, Welcome cleaning out there. behind. And even if it's his logo running to, to um, goal in front, he's done the work at the back here. And guess what? The logo that scores a super goal. Oh, yeah. So again, it's just those quick offloads instead of the fiddle, fiddle, fiddle.
Again, white getting caught faces the ball. Again, out of the negative, hasn't gone on in that right off. He's looking to hook the upswing. There he goes, and he gets it. Okay, so it turns a really strong backhand into an effish backhand. Super control distribution into the goal mouth. There's Ryan doing a really good job in those goals there. Alrighty, guys. Um, okay, just give me a moment. Uh, there we are, back again. Um, sorry, was that useful? Let us know. Um, drop us a comment. We um, would love to know. So um we just running a bit out of time to carry on with the, with that um but i hope i hope that you enjoyed that game review um and yeah let us know in the comments quickly if you have any questions let us know if that was useful and i do um, know that i start to sound like a broken gramophone record but <laughs> it's, it's always those little basic things that if you get them right you win and if you get them wrong and you're going to the negative all the time and you're not paying attention to the man and you're always going to, you're late to the plays, you're not marking the man, they kill you, okay? And if you just focus on doing the little things right, you will see how much your game improves. Yeah, 100%. Um, so, yeah, we'd love to hear back from you. We'd love to hear what you what you got out of that, um, of that game review. We're going to be doing um, this on a monthly basis inside the academy. Um, we'll find different games just to sit through and watch. Um, I think it just provides such great value. And, and what it does is it links um, the individualized sort of lessons inside the academy. Um, they take to, on some meaning. They take on some meaning mm. inside the context of a full chucker. Yes. Um, and I think it's really, really useful. So, um, yeah, for those of you that aren't in the academy at the moment, um, I'd highly recommend you go and join. Richard says the academy is the best money you can spend in polo. Um, I 100% agree. Um, Richard's been in, in the academy. He's um, been a you know a great part of the academy, and um, he, in my opinion, I agree with his opinion. It's it is the best money that you will spend on your polo this year mm -hmm. and going forward. And just just to get that constant insight from Gav. Um, it's just absolutely amazing. So thank you very much, guys. Um, really, really, fun. yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. Really glad to have you on board, and we will um, see you all in the academy. Um, until next time, cheers um, and chat soon. Also, Ryan, thank you very much for letting us use that bit of footage of you. I know it gets quite daunting with everybody watching you, mate, um, but hopefully it adds a little bit more value, as you've said. So, again, thank you very much, and really well done for the turnaround, eh? Lekker. Cheers, guys. Mm. Cheers.